Hey y'all, it's Sierra here and I am back with another video. This video is going to be about candle making. So if you are a part of the spiritual people that look at my videos, I'll be coming back with another one of those soon. But this one is strictly for candle making. But as you know, in the spiritual community, candle making kind of goes hand in hand with that because we use candles a lot. So feel free to stay tuned, even if that is why you subscribe to my channel. Um, so we're going to talk about um, the new wood wicks or the new X wicks from the Wood and Wick Candle Company. Disclaimer, my son is playing in the background, so y'all might hear whatever it is that he's doing. I think he has some kind of Nerf gun or something, so I can hear it. And I have my air purifier on. So anyways, um, we're going to be doing a video on the X wicks from the Wood and Wick Candle Company. This might be like backwards, so I don't know if y'all can read it right, but it's the Natural X wicks from the Wood and Wick Company. And I ordered the sample pack. So, um... It had about, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It had about seven or eight um, different sizes in here. And this is the point three, um, the point zero three. So if you go on their website, they have a bunch of different sizes. So um, there's the thickness and then there's also the length, I believe. So they have a bunch of different um sizes so what i did was i used their wick selector tool i don't know i don't know exactly how they word it but it's their wick selector tool and it you basically can choose what kind of vessel you're using and um, then it will give you a suggestion so i went with their suggestion i got the sample pack but i used the ones they suggested out of the sample pack in my candles um so like you can choose the aura vessel and then you can choose the type of wax you're using, whether it be now they do have their uh, specific brand of waxes. So the satin soy, the coconut apricot cream, whatever one you're using, um, you can select that and then the jar and then um, it'll tell you which wick size for the x wicks is going to be best for you to start testing with of course you're going to have to do your own testing anyway um if you use the jars from dream vessels and ambrosina i believe those are kind some of their jars are pretty much the same as the aura jar so you can just select that if you're not using a aura jar from wooden wick anyway so for their selection or for what their suggestion was for me to use the second from the largest size. I don't, let me see. The second from the largest size is 0 0.625 inches wide and three inches high. So it's the second one on this package so they recommended that i use that now when you get these sample packs they don't have them marked they're just all in this bag so you pretty much will have to separate them like you see i separated them all myself and kind of put tape around them so you have to figure out which sizes go where now it's pretty easy with the largest too, but it kind of gets a little harder when you start getting towards the smaller ones because it's you got to figure out which one is which. So the only thing is I wish they would label these somehow or I wish they would package these to where um, each size is together and they're not just in the bag and then you have to figure it out. Um, they also, the samples come with these wick clips. Now, if you are purchasing the Wix, um, you're not purchasing the sample pack, you have to buy the Wix separate from the Wix clips. Um, and I did end up buying the size that they suggested. So I am waiting on that to come in the mail. I think it's been about 10, 10 or more days, maybe like two weeks since I've ordered it. 
Um, but they now have a disclaimer on their website that if you are ordering the Wix at all, because they have so many people that are interested in the new Wix, they came out with X Wix, Color Wix, Wix that say words on them, all of that. So I believe that they are getting so many people ordering them. Um, they are behind as far as getting their orders out. So just know if you do order Wix with like, let's say you order some wax and some fragrance oil, but you also order Wix. They're not from what has been happening with me. They're not going to send um, them separately. You're just going to have to wait for your entire order until the wood wicks are available. So just know, plan ahead and know that it's going to take a couple of weeks for you to get your order if you do order these. Um, which is fine with me because there's a disclaimer. If there was not a disclaimer and they did not make that clear, then I would not be happy with that. But because they did make it clear, that's fine with me, but just know that. So I don't know when I'm gonna actually get them in the mail, but I have made a few candles with the samples that I have. I used the second from the largest one, which I'll put on the screen. And then I used the second from the smallest one. Um, so I did take some footage of me testing the wicks out. So I will probably put them throughout this video. Um, but I just want to kind of give you all what my initial thoughts are. Um, so when it comes to these wicks, they are in an X shape. As you can see, it's an X shape. This is a candle that I've already burned already. Um, so it's almost like having two of the regular size wood wicks in your jar now that means that the flame is going to be a, a pretty nice size flame um which is fine with me i actually like the shape of the flame um it's kind of like a pyramid it's kind of like a triangle type um flame instead of just the regular like teardrop shape looking flame so i really like the way that that looks but just be aware that it is going to be um, a larger flame and they are pretty short. So they don't, the wicks are short. I didn't really cut this down. So the wick was probably up to this line right here. So if you're using a tall jar, I don't know if you can get longer ones. You may be able to get, I think you can customize the size from them. I'm not sure. Um, but if you are using a tall jar, just know you won't be able to fill it up all the way um, to the fill line or to the rim because the wicks themselves are pretty short. Um, however, I feel like they m probably did that on purpose because the flame is so large. You do need to have a good amount of space in the jar that's empty because the flame is so large. So you don't wanna fill it all the way up and then the flame is definitely going to be outside of the jar, which means it's more likely to catch something on fire. So I feel like that's why they are as short as they are. Um, so just know that, and you may have to explain to your customers, this is a 14 ounce candle, but it's in an 18 ounce jar. So don't think that I'm like, you know, not giving you your money's worth. I have to have space in here so that it's safe, okay? So that way the flame stays inside of the jar. Um, but with wooden wicks, the flame can get out of control. So just know that having the X wick is like having basically two regular size wooden wicks. So you're gonna have to pay attention to the flame. I'm still not sure if I trust customers enough to use it properly without me giving them a lot of guidance. So I feel like I would have to create a, a guide as far as how to use them. And um, one of the things that I noticed is you do have to trim it as low as possible in order to get a controlled flame. But sometimes, um, like I would say trim it to like, you see this? Can y'all see? The height on that, I feel like you can't because I feel like my camera is not focusing, but okay. So this is where I have it trimmed right now. Let me do a demo and light this. I don't. All right, let me light this. 
on camera. But do y'all see how the top is kind of, it's hard to trim it with, um, so you definitely will probably want to have this type of wick trimmer. And you basically, in order to trim it, you just, you know, cut each side as far down as you can. Like, just do that. But as you can see, um, it's hard to get the very ends where each of the wicks meet. It's hard to get that part. So, you know, that's going to contribute to the flame being a little bit larger. If you have a cuticle cutter like this, um, then you can go in here and you can cut the rest like that. Okay, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show y'all what it looks like. But if you have a cuticle cutter, that works really good to cut these. Anyway. All right, so I lit it. Let's see if this was cut down low enough or not. All right, so the flame isn't too crazy the flame so yeah you want to cut it down to about that size but do y'all see how the flame is like a triangle anyways we're gonna blow this out okay let me fluff my hair out fluff the hair fluff the hair <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel like doing anything to my hair. This is freshly washed hair. And I'm going outside looking just like this. Anyway. So. That's kind of where you want to trim it. You want to trim it down as low as possible. Hopefully you were able to see like how low it was when I showed y'all. Um, but sometimes. Even when you do that. The flame still kind of gets out of control. So what you'll have to do is if you see that the flame is getting out of control and it's not calming down, you have to blow it out and then trim it again. And I suggest if that happens after you already trimmed it down pretty low, when you blow it out, I suggest trimming it while it's still while the wax is still melted because you can get down lower. Um, you may have to wipe off your little wipe this off because it's going to get wax on it but that allows you to get down a little bit lower um because when it solidifies you can only cut down to you know the part that's above the wax so it's kind of finicky like that's why i'm not sure if i want to like release this to the public just yet as far as my candle line without making sure that I have the proper guide. Like I would want to actually create a guide with pictures on how to cut it and you know, what to do FAQs, what to do if the flame is too large. Sometimes when the flame is really large, all you have to do is wait a few minutes for a full, for the melt pool to get larger. And then the flame will calm down because it has more of the, it's pulling more of the wax up because it's melted. So you kind of have to watch it. Um, I personally like how large the flame can get because um, I'm a spiritual person as well. We use candles a lot. You can use candles to fire scry or meditate by looking into the flames. And it also is a crackling wick. So I don't know if you can you could hear it when I had, you know, had it lit, but it is a cracking wick, crackling wick. So it's good to meditate to and just look at it and stare at it and uh, listen to it. So for me, uh, when most spiritual people, we're used to working with fire in one way or another. We, might, we may burn letters to release feelings or whatever. So I like how large the flame is. Um, again, you just have to make sure that you don't have this. We shouldn't have any candles near curtains. We shouldn't have any candles near 
uh, places that are drafty. We shouldn't have any candles near anything that can catch on fire, but you definitely, definitely, definitely have to be cognizant of where you put this candle in your house when you're using the X type of wick, um, just because the flame can get pretty large. But I just love it. I love the shape of it. Um, let me see. It's not a self trimming wick from what I see. What I've seen, I've tested it in like three or four different vessels that are shaped differently and that are different sizes. You have to trim it. There is no way you can't you cannot light it without trimming it and expect the flame not to be large like you can get away with doing that with some of the regular type wicks with this no you need to trim it before you use it if you um are one to forget trim it after you blow it out then um if you find that you trimmed it too low by accident what you can do is kind of hold your lighter over the wax and let it melt a little bit and then you should be able to light it so there's a couple different tricks and uh, tips on how to use it. I would suggest you test this extensively before you sell it to people. This is one where you definitely need to make sure you're testing. Sorry about that. My phone ran out of space because I take a lot of pictures on my phone of my products and then I edit those pictures. So it's just like. I got a lot of videos and clips of me testing candles and stuff so I can make these videos. So yeah, I ran out of space. I don't even know where I was at. Where was I at? Where was I at? Let's see. I think I was saying like, make sure you test um, extensively. You make sure you wanna make sure you test the combination of jar, wax, fragrance oil, uh, just because wooden wicks can be finicky, period, point blank. Like, the, we talking about the regular ones can be finicky. So, when we're talking about an X wick, which is basically two of them, two wicks, in my opinion, um, that are slit down the middle and you put it together to make an X. When we're talking about that, you know those are going to be finicky. So, you want to do what you can. Um, sorry, y'all. I just got to keep fluffing my hair. <laughs> Do what you can to test um, and then because they are finicky, you can test, 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 but you still want to make sure your customers know how to work with that type of wick as well so they can troubleshoot if something doesn't seem right. Mainly just let them know if the flame looks too large, blow it out, trim it some more, then you can relight it. Also, don't leave it lit too long after you know, I would say two to four hours, maybe three to be safe, blow it out, trim it. So that way the flame isn't too large. Because again, like I was saying, it's not really a self trimming from what I've seen. Um, and I use the deluxe satin soy wax from Woodwick company as well as 4630 wax. So sometimes I'm using one or the other. Um, let me see. When it comes to putting them together, like actually assembling it, the small ones are really hard, especially, and I have very small hands and very small fingers, and it's really hard. This is the small one. It's hard to assemble that. Um, I don't want to take any of them out because I have them. Um, I guess I'll do the largest one so that way I know I don't mix it up with any other one. So I'm going to take these out of my little tape that separates them from the rest. And I'm going to show y'all a tip to show y'all how to put it together. I definitely did break one of these when I was trying to put it together. The small, the smallest one. I definitely broke it, <laughs> um, but you can still slide them in this thing, even if you break it. So this is what the, let me pull the camera closer. This is what it looks like. So the wicks come like this. So they are split. And one side looks like this. 
and then one side has a, a longer I'm trying to find where the viewfinder thing is okay so what I like to do at first I was trying to put them together like this and that just wasn't working because of this little tab can y'all see that why is my camera being stupid stop stop not focusing can y'all see that anyway so doing it like that didn't work. So what has been working for me is sliding them like this. So like do this, open it a little bit, but be careful because you can break them and then open the other one. Okay, so now you see how it's like that. I just slide it down. That's the easiest way to do it. Slide it down and then you can like do this okay so i slid it down you see and now i'm just doing this okay now we have it in the shape of the x then you just take the x and then you put it into the x holder thingy okay so hopefully sorry i gotta fix my camera hopefully y'all were able to see what i was doing i'm gonna try to slide these out without breaking it i might have to leave leave them the way they are but i don't want to it's really easy to break these so be careful because this is money this is money you don't want to be breaking stuff you spent your money on <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna get this out off camera so y'all aren't here all day watching me trying to do that. But that is the easiest way for me that I found to put them together. Because at first I was doing it totally wrong, and really with the smaller ones, it doesn't matter how you put them together. It's still gonna be hard because they're so small. So you have to be careful, especially if you have bigger hands or bigger fingers. So yeah um i think that's pretty much it so i really do like these wicks also as far as the melt pool it's like you don't have to worry about getting a full melt pool you don't have to worry about uh tunneling or anything i didn't have any issues with tunneling i was able to get a full melt pool pretty quickly the scent throw was pretty good because the melt pool was pretty you know it reached the end of the edges of the jar and i use a lot of different shapes of jars um one of them is like the bowl from 1617 which can be kind of odd to try to wick so you would probably have to use maybe like four. okay y'all i'm back for the third time okay got cut off again because again i have a lot of videos on my phone so i had to delete more even more than i deleted the first time so let me go ahead and wrap this up because i keep getting cut off um so anyways that's my thoughts initial thoughts on the x wicks i like them i'm gonna keep using them um i don't know I might be picky about which customers um, I let use them. So this is probably, I'll probably use some of my customers that are um, repeat customers to test these out to just see how it is for people who don't make candles, people who are not experts as far, and I'm not an expert either, but you know, I know more than the customers do. So people who don't work with candles as far as making them and know as much about, you know, the wicks and all of that, I may have them test them just to see, you know, make sure they're not burning their houses down. Then I'll feel more comfortable selling these candles to customers who are used to using traditional wicks. Also, um, in order to trim it, it would be hard to do with scissors. So you would have to most likely have one of these uh, candle wick trimmers. Um, and for the smaller ones, the smaller sizes, you can get a cuticle cutter. Now, this is like a $19 cuticle cutter. So I don't know if a cheaper one will work. And I got this. Uh, my son is in jujitsu jiu class. I can't say that. But anyway, it's martial arts. So it has to keep his nails clipped really, really low. And I could not find the nail clippers uh, right before it was time for him to go. So I had to stop at the store to buy some. And they didn't have any nail clippers in the store. So I had to get these cuticle clippers. I think this is by Revlon. 
And I didn't know that they were $19 because there was no price. But we had to like hurry up. So I get to the register and I'm like, $19 for this? But I bought it anyway. Um, and then when I got home, I found the clippers. So I was like, what am I going to do with this expensive thing that I just bought? It works perfectly for cutting wood wicks. So you may want to invest in one of these. You may want to have tell your customers if they um, they're not going to really be able to use regular scissors. So get a cuticle cutter or get a actual candle trimmer. Anyways, that's it for my rambling. So now I may play footage. I think I'll, I may play some more footage of me. Um, actually testing the candle i think i might put some in as i'm talking so y'all can see as i'm talking but uh i think i'm gonna put some footage after this too so anyways if i do stay tuned i hope you enjoy the footage of me testing the candles otherwise if i decide to end it here because i haven't made up my mind yet thank you for watching and i hope you all have a great rest of your day all right, y'all, so it has been about three hours. Um, so I went ahead and blew out the candle and I trimmed it to the best of my ability. So give me one second so I can go ahead and relight this. All right, so I have relit the wick. um okay so it looks like it wasn't too short <laughs> so don't be afraid to cut it down really 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 short like barely above the wax but then again can we really say that because it all depends on the combination of wax and wicks and um fragrance oil that you use so depending on what type of um, wax or fragrance oil you might not have to cut it as low <sighs> the joys of tan candle testing um, so for me the flame was a little too large to wait four hours so I waited about three hours blew it out and uh, trimmed the wick and then relit it now this is about maybe like uh, the fourth or fifth maybe like the fourth time that I lit this candle because I can't leave a candle lit until it's all the way gone. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all probably heard that <laughs> sickness in my voice. Um, but anyway, this is about the fourth time I've lit this candle because I can't leave them lit for as long as it takes to actually consume the whole candle. So as you can see, there is quite a bit of soot this candle has been lit for maybe about two hours now um no maybe about three hours about three hours so we're about to get to the four hour mark which usually by four hours you should blow the candle out but as y'all can see there is some soot on the jar which does happen with wooden wicks also, um, this flame is dancing quite a bit and it seems to be leaning more towards the side of the jar that has the, um, the char marks on it. Um, so the one thing about these X wicks is they are, they do produce quite a large flame, which is probably why they are so short. Um, and they don't go up as high as normal wicks go because you need a lot of room in the jar for the flame. So the flame isn't outside of the jar. Because um, at first that threw me off. I was like, why are these wicks so short? But now I see they, they need to be. <laughs> um, so this is the size that was recommended on the website, uh, Wooden Wicks website, but I don't know. I feel like I'm going to test an even smaller one to see. Um, I personally like the large flame because I'm kind of, I've always wanted to kind of get into pyromancy. So to me, I like flames that are large. 
it just makes me a little bit nervous as far as customers and nervous as far as safety customers using the candle safely so i don't know um i would really 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 make sure i explain to my customers um, that they need to be careful with this type of candle and they need to make sure they don't have it anywhere close to anything. You shouldn't have a candle anywhere near anything that can catch on fire in the first place, but for real, for real, for real, this candle needs to be somewhere that it cannot accidentally catch something else on fire. Um, I am about to start testing the smallest x wick that wooden wick has i'll try to put it on the screen as far as what the name is um i just took a picture of this candle so i'm gonna go ahead and start testing it now um this is what it looks like i am going to cut this wick down some because i believe it is too high up um, and the flame will go outside of the jar so i'm gonna cut it down pretty low and then I'm going to light it with the wick and it is about to I cut one side shorter than the other by accident so it's going to take a minute for it to get to all the sides but I will come back and let y'all know how this one works in this jar All right, y'all, so it's been about three hours since I first lit this candle. Um, I was watching TV, so I don't know when we got to a full melt pool, but we're pretty much to a full melt pool. There's a tiny little bit around the edges. I don't even know if y'all can see it. I'm happy that my flowers have not caught on fire. <laughs> because I did put some roses in this. I want to make this a Valentine's candle. Um, and I am testing strawberry daiquiri fragrance oil. Definitely not my favorite, but it was a request. Um, someone requested that I do strawberry daiquiri and mango. So anyways, um, I like this wig. Um, I was worried that the flame would be too large because in the aura vessels that I'm testing, it is quite large with the larger X wicks. But I feel like it's it's uh, not too large, not wild and crazy, and um, you don't have to worry about getting a full melt pool. So. It is a pain to put the wick together though because of how small it is. It's easier to put the larger X wicks together. Just wanted to come on here and show you all this bowl I got from 1617 that I will be testing with a wood wick from the Wooden Wick Company. Um, I will let y'all know how that works out. This is the largest one, I believe. The largest wick, um, the X wick. So I'll put it on the screen because I don't know the name of it. And I'm testing fireside marshmallow or fire roasted marshmallow, something like that. And I use glitter that is glow in the dark. So let me see if y'all can see it. Do y'all see that? I'm excited. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love glitter. So yeah, it glows in the dark. We'll see what it looks like when it's melted. But anyways, I'll come back with an update. Um for y'all to let y'all know i'm hoping that this one wick, this one wick will work but typically um you are supposed to use about four wicks in this bowl so hopefully one wick works if it doesn't i will put two more on the sides two regular wicks so we're gonna have wood wicks and regular wicks <laughs> but anyway i'll come back once i have more uh information